welcome back to Fresh Bread. Um, this, the title for this week, if you would like a title, is The Hands of God. And remember, in Fresh Bread, we're coming together to look at the Scripture together as an act of fellowship, as well as devotion to the Word. And I hope that you're finding them helpful to you. The Hands of God. What is it to be in the Hands of God? Um, it says in 1 Peter uh, chapter 2, verse 21, uh, in teaching us how to live, it says, For God called you to do good. Um, so why has God called you? Now you might give a ministry answer, you might give sort of this is what I love to do in church answer. But really the fundamental call of God on my life and yours is to do good, to do good things, to, to be a, an influence in the world of goodness and of caring and of involvement. So God called us to do good. So when we see evil in the world, when we see injustice in the world, when we see inequality and bias, um, what are we to do? We are to do good. Uh, we're not to think, well, I'm, I'm as good as my neighbor or I'm as good as my nation. No, it's, it's, it's God who is your father. And, and so in his sight, we are born and called and anointed and filled with the spirit to do good. Um, uh, even if it means suffering. This is, again, 1 Peter 2. Um, even if it means suffering, just as Christ suffered. Some versions say just as Christ died for you. So we are to do good, even if it means suffering, just as Christ did. And now, you know, our reaction to that is, no, no, I just wanted to imitate Christ in the miracles and in the healing. And if I could do just a tiny bit of walking on water, I'd really like, that sounds cool. I'd like to do that. Um, it, it's where a lot of Christians are focused. And, and I'm all for the manifestations of God and for the gifts and the pouring out and the help of the Holy Spirit. But we are being called to do good and to use the gifts and the powers and, and the, the loving hearts that God has given us to reach out and to do good and, and to embrace suffering for that in any way that's necessary as we walk the path that God has given to us. Um, he wants us to do good even if it means suffering. Endure it patiently, says the word of God. Endure that patiently because good must be done. The kingdom news must go out. Uh, we're not proclaiming universal comfort, but we are proclaiming the goodness of a generous God who has given his own son uh, to us. Jesus, um, he, he says, he is your example and you must follow in his steps. So that's what the scripture uh, here encourages us to do. He, Jesus is our example and we must follow in our steps. We do that when we are crucified with Christ, when we're buried with Christ. That's why we get baptized in water as quickly after we become a Christian as we possibly can. Uh, we join him in his resurrection. Jesus is alive. He's not still dead. He was dead, but he's not still dead. He is alive, raised up by the power of God. And we join him in that resurrection power way of life. Uh, and and we, we join him daily as we are filled with his spirit. He is your example and you must follow in his, in his steps. So um, we, we follow the words of Christ and, and we follow the, the, the plan that God puts before us. But we see Jesus not just as words, but as an example. Uh, we live like him, even when we have uh, uh, perhaps no, no particular scripture telling us to, to stop and help this person, but that we stop and help because of his example towards us. We follow him in his steps. Um, whatever happened to Jesus, and this is uh, my focus on, on being in the hands of God. This is my focus particularly today. Whatever happened, Jesus left his case in the hands of God who always judges fairly. That's the second half of verse 23. He left his case in the hands of God who always judges fairly. Um, you remember one verse that we often find um, helpful, especially when we're not at all sure uh, why what just happened happened at all. This, this can be a verse where some things are hidden from our eyes. And we often quote it, Genesis 18, 25, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And he's our example, isn't he? So we must also strive in all cases of, of justice and inequality, of marginalizing people, of treating people worse than ourselves. Uh, we want everyone to be treated better than we are. We're happy to sacrifice our own privilege in order that others might do well. And um, so we, we also, like God, must strive to always do good, to always do what is right. Our God is a God of great generosity, great justice. He's always present and he cares for the very least in the earth, for the youngest child who's suffering without enough food. I'm sure you've been very moved 
you know, by uh, the, the, the reporting from Afghanistan where, where things are far from over and where uh, mothers and children and family are starving um, under the, the cruel regime. And, and we must all call on God, oh God, do right in there. Let, let things happen uh, in there. Um, we are in the hands of God to do right and we are in the hands of God to follow the example of Christ. Psalm 96 verse 13 says, Let the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he is coming. <laughs> it's a, always a, a, a good thing for us to remember that he is coming, he is watching us every day and he is uh, coming back. The return of Christ is certain. He is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the earth with justice. So be on the side of justice. Be, let that be where you're standing when the judge comes back and the nations with his truth. He will judge the earth with justice and the nations with his truth. Now that's a happy moment. It always is in scripture for the poor anyway, not for the, uh, the rich and the ones that are doing fine under this system, but for the poor, for the needy, for those who are calling out for help. It's always good news when the judge turns up. Uh, let us trust God, leaving everything in his hands because he always judges fairly. It's great to see you. God bless you. See you next time on Fresh Bread.